A man wrote the Bible? A whore is what she was. If it's a legitimate rape. It makes you a slut, right? It, cooking can be fun. Hey! I'm proud of a man! This week in Misogyny. A funny thing has been happening ever since the Dobbs decision. It used to be nearly impossible to get Republicans to shut up about abortion. You could ask them how the weather was, and they'd say, it's always dreary when it's still legal to murder a defenseless preborn baby. But now, all of a sudden, they're avoiding the subject. Hell, a bunch of Republican candidates in close races have gone about scrubbing any and all references to how anti-abortion they are from their websites. And I guess that could be for any number of reasons, but I'm willing to bet it has a little something to do with polls showing that Americans are, by and large, horrified by the extreme abortion bans being proposed in some parts of the country. Probably also has to do with the fact that women are registering to vote in the midterms at more than twice the rate of men. And maybe the fact that even in blood red Kansas, women showed up to destroy a referendum that would have greatly restricted abortion access in the state. But regardless of the reason, after decades of running on the abortion issue, they're now running away from it. The party seems happy not to talk about it at all between now and the midterms. Except, that is, for that cartoon naked mole rat of a senator, Lindsey Graham, who infuriated his colleagues this week by proposing a bill that would enact a national ban on abortion after 15 weeks. So after an entire summer of insisting that it should be decided by the states and therefore doesn't need to be a campaign issue through most of the country, they're now faced with the exact opposite. Now, a lot of people think Graham was actually trying to defuse the issue, if you can believe that. The reasoning here goes that people are mostly just scared of these ultra-extreme abortion bills. Like in West Virginia, where the legislature just passed a bill that would ban all abortions at any point, excepting only medical emergencies, rape, and incest. So Graham proposed what he sees as a compromise bill that would be far more palatable to the majority of voters. So when a candidate is confronted with the question of whether they support, say, Indiana's near-total abortion ban that's set to go into action next week, they can retreat to this 15-week ban and say, I support the legislation in the Senate. Of course, that's fucking nonsense since the bill wouldn't protect abortion for the first 15 weeks. It wouldn't stop these other states from enacting more strident laws, so it would only really affect the more liberal states. But since what would really happen and what politicians can run on are two different things, it might make some small amount of sense, I guess. And since what makes sense and what Lindsey Graham thinks makes sense are two different things, I can believe that's what he was thinking when he proposed it. But one way or the other, the Republican establishment is pissed. And it looks like the end result is really just drawing another underline on what might just be the most important issue in this year's midterms. Oh, and before I let you go, I want to throw a cap on a story I've personally been following for a while now, though I don't think it's come up on the show yet. It's the story of James Theodore Highhouse, a former army chaplain that became a prison chaplain that became a rampant abuser of female inmates. He used his status as a so-called man of God to sexually coerce and abuse inmates he was supposedly ministering to and used our culture's deference to his job to cover his tracks, reportedly telling one victim that if she reported him, quote, no one will believe you because you're an inmate and I'm a chaplain, end quote. Now, I don't want to go into the details of the abuse, but to give you an idea how bad it was, the sentencing guidelines for his crime is two and a half years, but the judge gave him seven. Now, why the fuck sentencing guidelines for any type of sexual abuse are that low is a whole other story, but it's worth remembering that he may well have gotten away with it if that victim had believed his warning. And let's face it, some other victim of some other chaplain almost certainly did. Anyway. Hate to leave you on such a depressing note, but let's face it, the misogyny section probably shouldn't end on an upbeat. So with that, I'll wrap things up and hand you back over to Noah, Marsh, and Eli. 